Hey guys, Bunny Guy Timmy here. Wanted to talk about something that I haven't really posted an official statement or article or any kind of information about this. So some people still don't know, but basically I I offer coaching. I also offer voiceover coaching. And I started doing that this year because I had gotten so many people come to me for advice and coaching and stuff like that. And so I started actually charging $100 for an hour. And I don't, I don't live off the coaching. I don't have to add to my income through the coaching. It's something that I do for an hour is a lot of my time. The only reason that I charge for like an hour, like a su substantial amount of time is because it does take a lot out of my day and it does take a lot out of me to evaluate someone's situation, evaluate their demos, their website, their, their equipment and all this kind of stuff. It does kind of take a lot out of my day, but that doesn't mean that I don't still answer the emails. If someone asks a very specific question that I can answer in like a, a short period of time, I'll do that. But if someone's wanting one-on-one, -on -one, very personal, very specific help, that is what the coaching is for. Again, it would be all in the email. If you would like the coaching, that is down in the email. If you'd like a one-on-one, -on -one, hour-long Skype coaching session, let me know. Again, $100 for an hour. Now, I wanted to get to a question that someone had asked, and actually been asked rather frequently. And it's not a bother. There's not one question that I've been asked involving voiceover that's ever been a dumb question. A lot of people say, hey, this might be a dumb question. It's not a dumb question. Don't worry about it. Ask away. There's a lot of stuff that people don't know. I only know a lot of this stuff because I've been doing it for like 11 years, and I've had a, probably about nine years of trial and error. Um, this year is still full of trial and error. I'm still learning stuff every day. But the, but the most of my embarrassing trial and error was basically the last nine years of voiceover. So I've learned a lot. The question that was asked was, can you convert a closet that has one of those sliding doors into a voiceover space, voiceover studio? Now, I don't have one of those kind of closets, so I can't really show you. But if I ever do, I'll do a video on it. But basically, this is what I've said. In order to convert a closet of really any kind, you basically need a couple things. You need treatment outside the closet. That's very important. You need treatment inside the closet, and you need some kind of barrier between the closet, ow, between the closet and the outside. That's basically it. Now, I think they were saying that their closet was about two feet two and a half feet deep and a couple feet wide and it had a sliding door and it wasn't, wasn't that tall, it was a little bit shorter than this. And basically, it, that's a very common sliding door closet style. It's basically just designed where you can just open it up and it's like that deep and you can just grab your shirts and then slide it back. So my thing that I always suggest if you're trying to convert one of those into a voiceover space is take the sliding doors out of the equation. Some of those closets you can actually like lift up and remove those doors. And I'd say put it in an attic or a basement or a garage or whatever, just get it out of the way. I actually used to have a pole that went across here. I actually took that off and moved it somewhere else just because it was in the way. If it's in the way, get rid of it. You're not gonna be using those doors. You're not gonna be using the sliding doors. And the reason is that you can't really put any treatment on those sliding doors because they're probably, like if you put anything on, on the one that gets the other door slid over it or on the other side of it. If you put foam on the side between the doors, it's going to get rubbed off. It's going to get destroyed. So you can't really treat that. I guess if there's enough distance, you could put a sound blanket there. But you're uh, leaving those doors on, you're going to be restraining yourself to only so much room. Now, you, you don't have to take the doors off. You could literally just leave them open the whole time, but it might be easier to take the doors off. The next thing you're going to want to do is get a big curtain rack, very large, very strong curtain rack to basically mount up above the closet. And that way you can put very large, heavy curtains over 
the, the opening. Now, these curtains that I have right here, I've shown these off multiple times, but this is, this is literally just a, a curtain that's designed for sound, for keeping sound out. So it has three layers. This one is a, a, like a very, it's not a denim, but it's like a canvas. It's almost like a canvas. And then it has a nylon or polyester on this side. So it's like canvas, polyester. And then there's another layer of really reflective, uh, say nylon. And then there's, it's almost like a wool. It's a very thick wool. So it's got three layers and there's air in between it. And basically, oh crap, I just knocked a panel off the wall. So basically the idea is it's a very, very heavy blanket with layers in it, reflective layers to try to keep sound from one side out. And it's got pockets to basically help dampen it. So basically you would get some of those kind of blankets. That blanket's very, very tall. It's like basically put all the way, it's above, it's above seven feet, seven feet in length. And I think it's like five feet long or five feet wide. So getting a couple of those blankets, putting them up over the, the closet would basically give you tons of room, tons of space. And by making it a, a curtain, curtain rack with a little bit of distance with a little bit of gap between the wall and where the curtain hangs you're going to get your you're going to earn yourself a little bit more room to be in the closet maybe six inches or so so that way you'll have a little bit more room to actually stand in the closet then what you're going to want to do is of course treat the walls in the closet however you can now if it's a really small closet you might not be able to have panels I think these ones are like three inches, two or three inches deep. They have smaller ones that you might be able to pin in there. And basically those are going to help get rid of that boxy echoey sound. You might, you might want to leave your clothes in the closet. I have clothes down here. Uh, it's just, there's another rack, like one of these down here. And then I still have like thick jackets and long sleeve shirts, things that I don't wear all that often down here in this one corner because this would be basically my base trap the clothes and the jackets right here would be my base trap so you you'd want to leave some of those clothes probably behind your you know in the back or on the other side of the microphone and then this would be better if i had like some kind of diagram or something then you would want to put the mic capsule facing at kind of a 45 degree angle in towards the inside of the the closet that way you're not you're not aiming it towards the outside of the closet where most of the reverberance and the echo is going to be most of your noise is going to come from the outside of the closet so you want to kind of aim it in towards the closet maybe kind of a little bit more of a narrow 45 degree angle but in towards the closet so the back of it is mostly towards the the exit or the entrance of the recording studio and then you're going to want to put up stuff on the walls on the outside in the room where the closet is so a lot of stuff like this bigger thicker things you could also make um acoustic panels which are big thick they're not foam they're uh fiberglass or particle it's you can look them up they're they're big they're basically, they're not really bass traps, but they're just big acoustic panels. You can pin those up on the wall. Those are actually really easy to make. These are not so easy to make. Basically, I have to carve foam. But you can get a whole bunch of those and put those on the walls. Those would help. If there's no carpet on the bottom of the closet, put carpet down. Put carpet in the room. Basically, you're going to want to cover every bare surface. If you have windows that are not that far from the closet where there's traffic going by, Put another big, heavy thing of curtains in front of that. Basically, you can basically just create just a little cubby to go into if you just block it off. The more layers between the microphone and the noises, the better it's going to be. And then you can just have like your laptop or you can basically have your iPad in. Everyone's got an iPad now or a tablet. Basically have your iPad in 
the studio with you and then just have the microphone feeding off to a laptop somewhere in the room far far away from where the microphone is if you can like me the computer is on the other side of this wall and all of my stuff is fed through a snaking series of cables over to the computer so that way the fan noise is relatively low i can still hear it but it's not that bad it doesn't show up in the recordings so that's that's kind of a question that i've been getting a lot and it would again it would be a whole lot easier if i actually had one of those closets to actually show you guys but i've i've put up all kinds of makeshift recording studios and i've you know showed shown different ways of doing treatment and basically you just be applying those to the same kind of situation so yes you can convert those things into recording studios i know tons of people that actually have those kinds of closets that they turn into recording studios and they make a good amount of money so it's it's doable it's very doable so anyway thank you guys for watching if you have any more questions leave them down in the comment section below you can email me if you have a a little bit more in-depth or a little bit more personal question that you don't want to leave in the comment section, that's totally fine. I'll still re still respond. Again, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, email me down below. We'll basically put voiceover coaching in the subject line. And I normally respond within a couple hours. Um, if you're new to this channel, give it a give it a subscribe. Give it a subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. And until next time, peace.